Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Christmas project. It's a wall hanging called Oh Christmas Tree. This is a pattern from Fig Tree and Company, designed by Joanna Figueroa. And it's really nice because it uses one package of five inch charm squares to do all of the patchwork, including these two patchwork borders. The only other thing we're going to need is half a yard of a background. Once we have all the patchwork done, we're going to add a little border and a binding, but we'll worry about that once we get the top done. Now, when I'm making a Christmas project, I'm always thinking of using Christmas prints. And I have these cute ones from Moda. They've got a lot of nice Christmas themed fabrics in them. But in the past, I've actually made Christmas projects with non-traditional Christmas prints. And I've got this group from Laurel Birch. It's called Solar Prism. They've got metallic accents. And I think that might make a very interesting Oh Christmas Tree wall hanging. So I couldn't decide which of these to make. So I'm actually going to make both. And you'll have to let me know in the comments when they're both done, which one you like best. Now for the demonstration, I'm gonna make this one on camera and I'm gonna use this white on white for the background. And then we're gonna pick out the pieces for the patchwork. Now for the star, there's a nice bright yellow. So that will be the star. This gold color, that will be the basket. And then we'll use these greens and aquas for the tree. We'll use these darker blues for that border. And then we'll finish up with the red and orange ones for this border. So all of these are going to get subcut into some different sizes. I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but I've made quite a few from Fig Tree and Company and they're very clear and easy to follow. So all of the patchwork is cut now. There was very little scrap left over, just some little teeny pieces here. I always like it when I can use up the whole charm pack. And I've kind of laid the tree out because that will help me when I go to piece it. And it also helped me visualize what pieces go where. These are gonna be the borders. And now all I have to do is cut out the background pieces. There's the last pieces of background we need. And I would recommend that you cut and lay it out as you go. It will really help when you start to piece things. So I've got the tree here with the backgrounds. And we've got a few extra pieces here. And those are gonna be what we're gonna add to make these tree branches slant. The first thing I'm going to stitch up is this star block. So I'm gonna grab all the pieces I need, and take them over to the sewing machine. The first step is to take the small gold squares here, and we're gonna draw a diagonal line on the back side of all of them. So I'm gonna do it right here at the machine. I'm just taking my straight edge, putting it from corner to corner, and drawing a light pencil line. Now I'm gonna get a couple, I'm gonna get three actually, of these rectangles here. And I'm gonna make flying geese units. So that to start those, we'll put this square right on top of that and we're gonna stitch right on the drawn line. So let me slide it over here. Now you can tell if you've done it correctly. If you open this up and all the edges line up, which they do. Now I'm just going to finger press this right here. And you can leave these extra layers on the bottom or if you like, if you want less bulk, 
you can trim it down so you have just a quarter inch seam allowance left. Now we're going to take another square and we're going to put it on the opposite corner. And we're going to again stitch right on the line. And then open that up. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off that excess. And we need to make three of these flying geese units. So there's the last of those three units. Next, we're going to take these pieces here, which are all the same size. We're going to put them right sides together. This one's a little hard to tell. And stitch them together. And I think it's going to be easiest if we finger press this seam allowance toward the light piece. So I'm just going to open it up, press right along there. Now on the back side of both of these, we need to draw some diagonal lines. So I'm again just lining up from corner to corner here doing a light line. And now this one has to go the opposite orientation. So this one has to go this way. So I'm going to have to spin it around so I can draw there. And these are going to be put on top of this one. This is going to line up on this corner and I'm going to stitch right on that line. Finger press it open. Trim off the back here. And now the other one's going to go the opposite way. So this is going to go on this corner. And this is a very interesting method of making a little unit that's going to fit with our other pieces. I've never done anything like this before. But now we've got two star points there. So we're going to put these guys like this, fill in with this center, put a couple corners there, and we're going to get a little star right on the top of our tree. So I'm just going to make these extra rows here. Now we're going to want to finger press these seams toward the middle. And these seams away, that's the way they want to go anyway. I always like to help them along. And now we can turn it this way and stitch the rows together. And look at those seam allowances are going in opposite directions, so it's going to be pretty easy to match everything up. This will fit on here and it's actually a little bit easier if you stitch with this on the top because as you stitch down here you can stitch right there and then you know you won't be too deep and get that point um, stitched off. Now 
Now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and get it nice and flat. All right, that is the star that's going to go on the top of the tree. So for an update on this color, I've got it well on the way, but let's continue to work on our brightly colored one here. I want to get all of the tree parts into rows. So in order to do that, I need to add these little pieces onto these squares here. So I'm gonna take, there's just four of them. I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine. So all I'm going to do is put these right sides together, use a careful quarter inch seam to stitch it, and then press the seam allowance toward the dark color. There. Now, each one of my rows has blocks that are all the same height. Now we're ready to sew the tree blocks together, but we're not going to put any of these backgrounds on. We're just going to sew these colorful parts together. So I'm gonna pick up one row at a time in order, stitch it together and put it back. There, now all of these rows are sewn together. And the next step is to make them all slanted like this. So we have some background squares here and we're going to draw a diagonal line on the back of all of these. So I'm just using again a light pencil line from corner to corner. We're going to start with the top row so we've got these little squares here that are exactly the same height as this row. And let's take this to the machine. Let's line everything up here and stitch right along that drawn line. And while we're here, while we're here, I'm just going to spin it around and do this other one. Line it up. Now these will get ironed like this. And you can see it's exactly the same size, but I'm going to trim off the excess in the back so it's not too bulky. There's the top row. Now the rest of these rows, they're a little bit taller. So we're gonna use these bigger squares. Sew one on each end of all of these rows. There's the last row there. And I did go ahead and iron up each of those rows so they're nice and flat. Next step is to work on the basket. The first step is to sew all of these colorful pieces into one big block. Now, you may have four different pieces. You may have two of one fabric and two of another. It doesn't really matter. It'll look interesting no matter how you do it, but I'm just going to sew down the middle here and sew down the middle here and then finger press those seam allowances in opposite directions. And then I can stitch the top half and the bottom half together and it'll be nice and flat. Now to make the basket have sides that look like that, we use kind of a funny method here, which I haven't done before. We're going to measure over two and a quarter inches on the bottom of this square here and put a little dot right there. Now we're going to draw a line from the dot to the corner. Now we're gonna put this right 
on top of here and stitch right along that faint line. And I'm just going to leave it right there for now. Now for the other corner, we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to draw the dot here and stitch that way. Now we're going to take this to the ironing board before we move on. I'm going to iron this to the outside. Same thing here to the outside. Now we want to trim off the excess so it's the same size block as what we started with. The easiest way to do that is from the back side. So I'm simply going to trim off this background. Now it's the right shape, but I'm going to trim off these back two layers. So you can do it with your rotary cutter or you can just trim it with your scissors. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because it's just the seam allowance there. There, that is the basket. Now we've got everything ready so that we can sew all the pieces into rows. So I'll just start with the top row here and take it right to the machine. There's the first row, and I'm just going to sew up all the rest of the rows. There's the last row. Now, to sew the rows together, it couldn't be easier because there's no intersections to match at all, and they're all exactly the same length. So sew them all together and press all the seam allowances down towards the bottom. I've got all my rows put together, everything ironed nice and flat, and I went ahead and stitched this one together as well, and it's got the patchwork borders and the outside border added. So that's the next step that we're going to do on this one is these patchwork borders. The first border is made up of all of these squares, so I'm gonna take them right to the sewing machine. So all I have to do is sew them side by side, and I don't have a lot of different color change here, so it's probably not going to matter what order I put them in. If your fabrics are different, you can lay them all out ahead of time if you want to make sure you get um, a nice blend of the prints that you have from your charms. So you can see here I have four pieces. I have both sides and the top and the bottom. And sometimes when I have a lot of patchwork like this, all in a row, I don't finger press it first. I just put it right side down, pull it a little bit, and then just take my iron and press those seam allowances all in the same direction. And then I'll check it from this side, make sure it looks straight, and then steam press it. Now the patchwork border is exactly the right size we need and the pattern tells you how many squares to use. So I'm going to put the top and bottom on first and then the sides. Then I'm going to use the same procedure to make this next patchwork border that's going to go all around. And then we'll be ready to select a fabric for the outside border. The patchwork borders are on and now we need to pick out a larger plain border. So I've got some options here. This nice bright white, the same as the background, that actually looks a lot better than I thought it might. Another option would be this nice gold. It seems to pull out these colors. And then a third option would be this nice deep blue. That looks good too, and I'm trying to imagine what my binding might be. So if I did the blue border or even the gold border, I could use a red, or I could use this bright orange. The bright orange looks good. I'm really thinking that the white is the best option. So let's see what will look best for binding with the white. Okay, so I'm imagining this is my border. We could go with a gold binding 
that actually looks pretty good. Um, the red, not as nice as I would like. Let's see the orange. The orange is nice, it echoes that. Um, I think, let's see if we can see what the blue looks like here. And imagine it little. So we've just got a little bit of blue. I think that's my best option because it's dark. I like a dark binding. So we'll do this for the border and that for the binding. There. Both of the tops are completely done and they're ready to be quilted. But before we do that, there's something in this one that's bothering me. This square right here, it's just a little too light and it just doesn't, it's just making me feel like I should change that one out. Now, all I had left from my greens, from the green squares was this and it's not big enough, but there were scraps from the borders. So I'm gonna stitch these two together and I'm going to replace this piece. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So this is easiest from the back side. This is kind of a minor surgery. I'm just going to snip out about every fourth stitch all the way around the block. Now, some of you may find this easier with a seam ripper but I like to just use my little snips here. It doesn't matter, whatever is easiest for you. Now I can simply go to the other side, the side I didn't snip, pull it up, and I can get that whole thread out there. Same thing on this side, except it's probably connected on the ends. So we'll just snip it here and here. And when you do it like this, you're gonna get rid of the threads. I don't like to have it messy where I take something out. So I like to take, let's see, here's the whole one. I like to pull these long ones out. And this whole thing will probably come out now pretty easily. Sometimes you have to find one or two more stitches you didn't get. But I don't want to have to distort it much. Let's see where are we attached here. Right there. And this way the piece you're taking out will be nice and clean, which is important because we're going to use this to cut our replacement piece from. And then we're going to take all these little itty bitty strings that might be left here and pull them all out if we see anything loose like this. Now that we've got that piece out, I'm gonna take these two and stitch them together so they will be wide enough so we can recut that shape from them. And I'm just going to finger press this seam here. And then I'm gonna just set this on top of it. And I could take it to my cutting board but honestly, I can do that with the scissors right here. Now, all we have to do is replace this piece. So let's see where it's going to fit in here first. Let's see, let's turn it this way so we've got the colors mixed in there nicely. All right, so the first step would be to sew these seams here. So I'm just going to put this back here, get these pieces right side together, open everything up, get it nice and flat, and then restitch. There we go. So I'm pinching it together, move all that out of the way. 
double check. Once you get it stitched a little, it'll anchor it and we can smooth everything down here. Let's open it up again. The next step is this seam. So let's see, we should be able to flip it this way. Yeah. And you may find that you want to take more of your previous seam out. You can do that if you need to. You just want to have enough to work with here. Matching up the corners. And even though this seems like a lot of work to change out one piece, if your project if one piece in your project is going to bother you, it's really worth it to change it out. Okay, now all we have to do is these two seams. So let's do this one. We'll flip this right sides together. Okay, now we'll spin this here. Looking good. One last seam here. So I'll put it right sides together. All right, so here is the top and I'm going to need to iron it up and then I'm going to check for any little extra threads that we've got and it will be good as new. And from the back side, We'll get everything again ironed nice and flat again, and then I'll be happy with the tree. There, I've got the piece replaced, and I'm a lot happier with it. I don't think I've replaced a piece in a quilt in years. I almost never do it. But if you do find something that really bothers you, it's a lot easier to fix it now than once you've got the whole quilt quilted. Okay, we're ready to do the quilting. Now, because I have a big quilting machine, I'm gonna put one on the machine, but it's not a very large project, so this can easily be done on your home machine, and that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Now I'm ready to make my quilt sandwich. Now we call it that because we're sandwiching the batting between the top and the back. When I have a small project like this, and I'm doing it on my home machine, and I don't have special feed dogs on the top to make it go in, I don't have a walking foot, I like to take the top and put it a little bit crooked. So I've just angled it a little bit. I've still got backing and batting behind everything. And the reason I do this is because then if I'm stitching on straight lines here, it's not going on the straight grain of the backing. It's going a little bit on the diagonal. And it's a lot easier to quilt that way. When you're on the straight grain, the back doesn't stretch at all. When you're on the diagonal grain a little bit, it stretches. And that makes it easier to quilt when you don't have a walking foot, you can't drop the feed dogs. So this is the way I'm gonna lay it out. Okay, I've pinned all the way around the edges and I've put some pins in the middle as well. And I'm just going to anchor everything down on the edges right now. And then I can get these outside pins out of the way. So I'm just sewing very close to the edge. And this line of stitching will be hidden by our binding. There, now everything is anchored together and I'm ready to start quilting. Now I'm gonna use white thread throughout because I don't think a colored thread will look it good in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I think I will go around this line right here and I'm going to go in the ditch or near the ditch. So in the ditch means you're stitching right on top of where your seam was. And again, near the ditch is fine in the ditch is even better. So I'm just trying to go right on top of my seam line there. Now, because my back is a little bit crooked and not a straight grain, 
I'm not having any trouble with that top wanting to travel. That's normally a big problem. Normally the back gets pulled in faster because you've got a feed dog on the bottom and I don't have a walking foot on the top. And so you end up having to fight that the whole way around. With the back crooked, I'm not having any issues with that at all. I'm just going to keep adding quilting. I think I will go here and then I will go across these lines here. And I always start out with less quilting. You can always add more quilting, but if you start doing something really detailed at the beginning, you kind of have to keep doing that the whole way around. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of quilting and then add more if I think it needs it. So I think before I finish this up, I'm going to go ahead and get the quilting machine started because that way it can be sewing while I'm sewing and it will get both done at the same time. So we want to pick a thread color. I've got a lot of options here. Red would really show up. Kind of interesting. Got a nice deep green. It's going to show a lot in the background, not in the tree. Of course, we can always do white and it won't show very much in the tree. It'll show a little on this border, not in the background, but this is what I was thinking I wanted to do. It's a nice bright yellow. Looks great on there. Won't show up very much there. We'll blend in there. So let's do this happy yellow. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use Stars A Swirl. This will be perfect on our Christmas tree because it's got stars, just like the star that's on the top of the tree. And then it's got these swirls and both of those motifs are in the prints we're using. Both of the O Christmas tree wall hangings are all done and I'm very happy with both of them. Now this one, traditional Christmas colors, you can't see the quilting at all because it's all in the ditch. Now let me show you where I did it. I specifically chose a dark red backing so that you can see where I stitched. Normally I wouldn't do this because I have to back tack a lot when I'm doing this on my machine and the back tacking shows quite a bit. So you want to keep that in mind when you're selecting a backing color. I do like the nice black contrast binding. It just seems to frame it very nicely. Now this one here, very happy with this also, and the quilting with those stars and swirls, I think it really enhances the tree quite a bit. I used the same red backing here. But of course, I didn't have to stop and start because the machine does it in one continuous st stitching line. They both are 26 by 36, so it's a nice size to hang above a little dresser. You could put it on a coffee table. Just really fun to make, very, very satisfying. Now for me, I'm happy with how both of the wall hangings turned out. I do really enjoy traditional Christmas colors. But this nice bright one, it's just so cheerful. I would like to hear which one you like best. So leave me a comment down below and let me know which is your favorite. Thanks for watching our video today on how to make the Oh Christmas Tree wall hangings. I hope that inspires you to start some of your Christmas sewing early too. Now, we're going to have a giveaway. This is a nice, bright, K-Facet trip around the world quilt. 
it's 46 inches square and I made it using fat quarters. We have a free pattern in our free pattern section that shows you how to make your own, but today you can win it. So all you have to do is click the link below the video that says giveaway. Put in your email address and your name and we can send it to the winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.